Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard and if you are new to my channel please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button and check out my website in the description below. I want to give you an update on all of the vegetables that I'm growing. If you look at my previous video you will see when I had just started planting my bell pepper plants which I started from seed and I always plant my bell pepper plants in containers because I seem to be more more successful with that so this one is coming along real good as you can see I'm getting a lot of buds on this plant and this one in particular look at the flowers on this particular bell pepper plant as well as bell peppers that are actually coming along. So this one, this particular bell pepper is the yellow bell pepper that I started from seed in 2020. And then I have another bell pepper over here and I have this covered as well. So this is what my bell pepper plant is looking like right now in the first week of July. The reason why I like to keep covers over my bell pepper plants is for many, many reasons. In Colorado, we are 5,200 feet above sea level and our sun gets super, super intense and the leaves in the bell pepper has a tendency to wilt. Secondly, I don't like fighting with insects, uh, especially caterpillars that uh, have a tendency to want to feed on your plants. So I also keep my um, Pepper's covered. Again, it serves two purposes. It shields it from the hot sun. All this summer, we've been in 95 degree temperatures and above. So um, I also like to make sure that I'm not having caterpillars and critters eating my food. As we move along, I has just started two plants of, of growing moringa trees. Unfortunately, my peach tree, I almost lost it. In April of 2020, we had a, a, a really severe frost and I end up losing probably 75% of the tree. I've already cut back one branch, but as you see, I have another small tree that is coming up. So when, when you get these little suckers right here, I'm probably going to remove this sucker, but since this tree was dying, I went on ahead and let this sucker grow. And as you can see, it's, this, it's, it's grown this high up. This side of the tree decided to um, live, so this branch is growing. Unfortunately, when you're gardening in Colorado, we usually do not have springs. and you always have to try to adapt. So in this particular case, I was able to salvage this particular peach tree. I will be cutting this part off because this part of the tree died. But as you can see, I allowed that sucker to grow. By next year, I should have a full tree. Uh, my strawberry patch is doing really good. If you look at my previous video, when I was planting my carrots, which I started from seed, and it seems to be doing good as well. One thing I want to do point out is I do keep my peppers covered and I do that again just to keep the critters, the rabbits and the squirrels and the insects off my bell peppers. These are the three cucumbers I started from seed and they are also doing good. Now these cucumbers I do not cover is because they do need pollinators. And I must say the pollinators have done well um, um, pollinating my cucumbers. This is my first cucumber that I'm harvesting. Not too bad. And as you can see, I have a cucumber over here and I'm gonna go ahead and let that get a little larger but I have a cucumber right here. 
and I have a cucumber here and I have a cucumber here and so my cucumbers are cucumber plants doing really good if you can see this particular plant has lots and lots of flowers I have been monitoring this one looking for any female flowers to try to determine if I should help nature along but so far so good I've been getting a lot of pollinators on this particular cucumber uh, plant so I'm really really happy about that and again all these were started from seeds if you would check my previous video you could uh, see where I had started for seeds started from seeds and actually planted them and um, they're doing really good and this is the first week of July here's my tomato plants my cherry bush tomato plants that I'm, I started from seeds and as you can see they're full of flowers the um, cherry tomatoes are coming in really good this one here is doing super good full of flowers cherry tomatoes are coming in really good and the same way with this one it's just just an abundance of tomatoes just doing really good this one's a bushier one too now I also wanted to note that the same coverings that I put on my bell pepper plant I also put the same coverings on my tomato plants these stakes helps keep the covering over my tomato plants and I'll just show you a picture in the corner of what that looks like what type of purposes does this serve the purpose that it serves it keeps the tomato hornworm off the tomato plants apparently um, those particular moths are very attractive to these type of plants this is a nightshade plant and unfortunately if you're not monitoring it and you're not careful they could decimate a plant in a matter of days therefore it allows me to keep that covering over it the nice thing about tomato plants is you can actually help pollinate your flowers by just flicking the flowers like this or maybe shaking it so if, if one would ask well if you keep it cover how are you getting tomatoes well they pretty much self pollinate if you could just flick the flowers so it appears as if maybe a pollinator is uh, pollinating the flower or shaking it like this. So I just want to let you know how I'm doing with the uh, tomato plants. As you can see, my grapevine is doing well. I have a lot of grapes coming in, as you can see. Lots of grapes. This is a, this is a Concord grapevine. And this grapevine's probably about maybe eight years old. And you can see grapes all along here. I'm gonna have to eventually tighten up this, uh, this wire, this first wire, because over time the grapevine has pretty much sagged it. Now I wanna show you a small problem I'm having with this Concord grapevine and why I cover it. As you can see, I'm starting to get rust on the leaves. And although this is a cool season grapevine, because we're 5,200 feet above sea level, our sun is extremely intense. And through trial and error, I had discovered that by July, my entire grapevine was full of rust. And in order to combat this problem so I wouldn't have to put sulfur on it, just um, cut back to try to treat it, Occasionally I will come in and if I see rust um, starting to occur, I will cut these leaves off so it won't spread. Just, just pretty much do it. And then I would take my cover and cover the grapevine like this. And what that does, it actually helps keep the grapevine cool it shields it from the intense sun we are we have we have been 95 plus degrees over the last three weeks and that's really hard on this concord grapevine because it is a cool season grapevine but it's a good grapevine to use in colorado you always want to make sure that you're selecting the right grapevine for your region and concord grapevines do very very well so I just wanted to share with you some of the downsides of growing grapes, particularly this type of cultivar. 
and why I keep a cover over it. And as you can see, that we're starting to have problems with the grapevines overheating and uh, we're getting rust on the vines. It doesn't look too bad, but I will have to come in and pull those uh, leaves off and thank God the covering keeps it cool. I am also growing kale and it's almost toward the end of the um, season. Uh, I've harvested four times. Kale is, uh, excuse me, I'm not growing kale, I'm sorry. I'm growing collard greens. Um, sorry about that. Growing collard greens, they've done really well. I have harvested them four times. They're pretty much coming to the end of their season. The reason why I keep the collard greens covered is because it's part of the brassica family and they have a tendency to get very wormy. Butterflies let, love them, they lay eggs on them and then people wondering why is something eating up my collard greens. If you have anything that's part of the brassica family, I encourage you to cover it up. I probably would do one last harvest on the um, collard greens and then call it a season and start it back up in the fall. I have my thyme, I have my mints, I have my chives, my um, garlic is ready to be harvested so it's, I need to try to get that done as soon as possible. My boysenberry bush is doing good so as you can see I'm starting to get um, fruit on my boysenberry bush so I've been really really pleased with the outcome so you can see I have plenty of fruits that are coming to fruition so I'm really happy about that. As we continue along my garden, this is my first time growing a watermelon plant and I'm really really excited about it. This particular watermelon plant is called a, let me pull up my tag, it's called a watermelon sugar baby bush. I started this one from seed in April of 2020 and as you can see I have a watermelon coming up. Oh let me see if I can find it. Oh right here. See and I have I have already um, so you can see that and I'm trying to look for the other one. Um, let me see if I can find it. It's, it's really, in, in, oh, there it is, right here. There's the other one right there. There's the other one right there. What I, I have been helping this particular watermelon along the way, um, because I have to keep it cover, I do not have a natural pollination going on with this particular one. So what I've been doing is when I see a bell pepper like this, excuse me, a watermelon like this that, is ha that, that has an open flower, I look for the male flower and pollinate it. So this particular one was pollinated by actually um, using the male flower to pollinate this particular female flower. So I, so far, first week of July, I have two watermelons. I actually have four watermelon plants in this barrel and two of them already are producing watermelon so I'm really happy about it. But after much research I have learned that um, this particular watermelon plant is susceptible to a lot of insects and diseases so the best way to try to protect that is keeping this um, mesh covering over it, monitoring the watermelon plant and making sure that I can um, help na Mother Nature along and manually pollinate it. This particular barrel, I'm growing sweet potatoes. I did start this out late um, in the season, but so far so good. Maybe I can get sweet potatoes by fall. This is my second year growing asparagus and I'm really happy with this one. You don't want to start harvesting asparagus until the second or third year. So the asparagus had turned into ferns, but I'm really happy with my asparagus bed. So I want to take you along and show you my other vegetables that I'm growing in barrels. I'm using every part of my backyard to grow food. 
and this is what it is about gardening food in your own backyard. I am growing potatoes in this particular barrel. I'm growing potatoes in that barrel. I was given uh, broccoli as a gift and I decided to plant the broccoli. So far it's doing good. This particular in my backyard is very cool. It's under a tree and it's in the corner of my backyard where it doesn't get a whole lot of sun. It literally stays cool. But again, this is part of the brassica family. This is where they have a tendency to get really wormy. So I've kept it covered. I'm thinking that maybe I might have planted too many in this container. I probably should have kept it to two plants instead of four. I understand if you crowd them, the heads will get a little small. But again, this is my first time growing this type of plant or growing this type of crop. So we'll see how it does. It's, it, this is the first week of July and it's doing really good. It's growing, it's um, healthy, um, not having any problems with insects. And we'll see if it's gonna produce me the results that I'm looking for. So I just wanted to share that with you. I'm also regrowing celery, which is doing really good. So when you have celery, that you have the ends of the celery, don't throw them away. Just root it in water and plant it outside. This one's the same. It's, um, I'm actually growing, uh, regrowing celery, and this is doing super, super good. So I just wanted to take you along and give you an update on how I'm doing growing my food in my own backyard. On the next video, I'm also gonna be showing other parts of my garden where I'm uh, attracting pollen polliners and other foods that I'm growing as well. So I thank you for coming along and I wanted just to share this update with you and I welcome your comments and thank you for watching.